Good afternoon, options traders. Well, this is one of the most commonly asked questions I'm getting for the end of February 2020. And that's because we're going through the coronavirus scare. And of course, the markets are sinking, and that means that the VIX is spiking. And a lot of traders tend to trade the VIX when they're expecting market panics, thinking that they're going to cash in on this big spike. They get the big spike, and then they look at the quotes and go, how come there's no intrinsic value, or certainly not as much as I would expect? Remember, all options should trade for full intrinsic value. And that's generally true, except for the VIX. So why is that? Well, first of all, let's back up and find out what the VIX is. It's an index. It actually stands for the Volatility Index. It was started by the CBOE, Chicago Board Options Exchange, in 1992. But they've also gone back with previous data, and they can kind of backdate it. And so you'll see VIX calculations even for the crash of 87. But it was officially started in 1992. And essentially what they do is they look at the market prices for calls and puts. There's a range. They've got to have at least 23 days to expiration, but less than 37. And so they do this calculation, and they're trying to ultimately estimate the implied volatility. How much volatility are traders willing to pay for at this moment? However, the VIX is also called a fear gauge and it tends to move inversely with the market. So you're going to see that it tends to spike when there's market panic, and it tends to be low when markets are calm. So again, this is why it's a popular underlying when market prices are falling. Traders are thinking, hey, if the market prices are crashing, panic is gonna set in, the VIX is going to spike, so if I buy calls, I could make a lot of money. Why should I buy a $20 stock hoping it goes to 40, right? That's never gonna happen. But if I can buy VIX at 20, it could go to 40 in a day. And I can therefore cash in and make a lot of money by buying calls. So they do this, we get the big spike in the VIX, and they find out that their options are just not anywhere as valuable as they thought. And in fact, they're missing a lot of intrinsic value. So again, this is the big mystery here. So to understand the first piece of the puzzle, we have to take a look at the VIX and understand that it is mean reverting. So here's a chart of the VIX going back to 1990 and all the way up through Feb 28th of 2020. And mean reversion just means that the prices tend to go sideways. They gravitate towards a long-term average. And so you can see that there are times like during the financial crisis here, late 2008, that we got this big spike up here over 80, but look at how quickly it tends to fall right back towards that long-term average. And if the VIX is very low, it tends to get pulled up higher. So if we look at this roughly 30-year period, the average is just a touch above 19. But you can see that there's a handful of spikes that every so often can get above 40. And for those of you who have had statistics, this is actually about 2.7 standard deviations away from the average. So, three standard deviations is really pushing the limits. Not saying that it can't happen, but it's just really rare. So again, in this 30 year period, just a handful of times that we've ever been above 40. Well, on February 28th, we actually cracked almost 50 intraday and closed just a touch above 40. And you can see that from this big spike right here. So again, it raises a question, if we're looking for this big spike, and we get this big spike, how come we're not making money on the calls? Well, let's go over and take a look at a platform. So here's the E-Trade platform, and to understand what I'm talking about is that here's a closer look at the VIX over the past year, going very sideways, and then look at this ramp up here going into the coronavirus scare. So really five straight trading days of just spikes. And you can see this little shadow here on this last candle actually got almost to 50. The high was 49.48, so about 49 and a half, very rare. The closing price was just a touch above 39, so almost 40, but still pushing that upper end of the range. So again, if you bought calls, let's say five or six days ago, or certainly even a week, 10 days ago, you would think that you'd be making a lot of money through here. So why are traders complaining that there's no intrinsic value in them? Well, let's go take a look at the quotes. So I'm just going to start with the March 25s. Doesn't really matter which expiration, you're going to find the same discrepancies. 
Also notice that these are all AM settled. And if you don't know what that means, I've got a recent video in here talking about the difference between AM and PM settled. But that also adds another wrinkle to the problem. But with that issue aside, the closing price up here you can see is 40.11. So let's just pick a strike down here. Let's say maybe if we had the $30 call. Now if that was a stock at $40.11, the $30 call would have $10.11 of intrinsic value. But if we come over here to the intrinsic value, it shows zero. So again, you might think that that call option's gotta be trading for at least $10 and it's only trading for three. What about the $20 strike way up here at the top? If this was a stock, it would be trading for at least $20.11, but look at the intrinsic value, just a touch above six. What's happening? Why is there no intrinsic value in here? Normally this sets up what's called an arbitrage, which is why for stocks you'll never see this, it's certainly not to this degree. So what's happening here with the VIX? Well, to get those answers, let's go over to the SIBO's website. So here's the SIBO's website, and we're looking at the VIX options. And the first thing to notice is that the exercise style right here is European style, which means it can only be exercised at expiration. That's a big hint as to why we're missing all of this intrinsic value. And if this is exercised, like most indexes, it's going to be in cash. Take a look down here. Exercise will result in delivery of cash. So it's cash settled, but you can't get that cash until expiration. So in my example there, if you're looking at the $20 strike and the index is, let's say, at 40, it doesn't matter that it's at 40 today. It hasn't expired yet. You can't get that cash. There's nothing you can do with it. I mean, sure, you could close the call, but they're going to account for the fact of what is it actually worth based on what the futures are trading for. So that's what makes this really a derivative of a derivative. We're trying to estimate where volatility will be based on the futures. So now let's go over and check out the futures quotes from the SIBO as well. And I'm on the March 25th expiration. So the futures contract closed at 26.50. Doesn't matter that the VIX index was at 40. People are expecting it to be around 26 and a half at expiration. And because there's nothing you can do with it until expiration, this is how they're basing that value. So again, if we're looking at the $20 strike, there should be about $6.50 plus or minus of intrinsic value. And that's why the $30 call showed none. So you can see that as we go further out into the future, look at this going down, mean reversion. And this is why you have to be careful about buying longer dated options on the VIX because they can appear to be cheap, but it's really just because of the long-term anticipation of mean reversion. So if you're trying to play a spike in the market, one hint is that you really need to stay very close to an expiring futures contract. And they're not going to be perfect, but they'll certainly be a lot closer. And the closer that you get to expiration of that futures contract, the more that the option is going to truly track the intrinsic value. So for one more example, let's check out the March 4th expiration with the futures closing at 35. Let's go back over to the E-Trade platform. Let's take a look at our March 25s again and the $20 strike was trading for $6.10 of intrinsic value, which appears to be a long ways away from what should be $20.11. But once you understand it's tied to the futures contract and that that futures contract was $26.50, it's actually tracking it quite well. But that's also because this is a deep in the money option. But that wasn't true for the $30 strike, even though that's still an in the money option it shows zero intrinsic value. But again, that's because the futures contract was at 2650. So what happens if you come in on the shorter end of the expiration curves? Let's try the March 4th expiration. And now our $20 strike has $13.55 of intrinsic value, which again appears to be a long ways away. 
because most traders would think that there should be $20.11. But remember that this futures contract is trading for 35. So it's actually tracking it fairly closely. And of course, if we base it on the mark, we can see that it is. So another reason or part of this discrepancy here is that we have very wide bid-ask spreads. But how would we have fared if we had taken the $30 call? Notice that we're now starting to pick up some intrinsic value, $3.55. Yeah, it's still not the $10.11 that most people would think that it should be worth. But remember that the futures contract is trading for 35. So at least we picked up something. So the main thing to understand is that if you ever get the bright ideas to trade the VIX because you think the market is going to crash, at least stay on the short end of the expiration curve so that you can at least reasonably track the futures contract. Remember, the closer you are to expiration, the more that the options are going to track that futures contract. So that's going to be to your benefit. There's nothing more frustrating for a trader than to be correct in your outlook and find out that you still didn't profit. And that's so easy to do with the VIX. And hopefully, now you understand why. For those who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course in Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.